A team of international scientists is embarking on a new research project that just a few years ago would have been dismissed as very fringe. They're looking for evidence of alien-built technology. It follows a U.S. government report about unidentified aerial phenomenon, or as the public would say, UFOs. Avi Loeb is a theoretical physicist at Harvard University and the leader of this new project. He's in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us about this new project and what are you trying to achieve? Thank you for having me. Uh, the goal is to conduct scientific uh, study of the nature of these unusual objects that were identified. They were reported uh, to the Congress, the U.S. Congress, um, as uh, objects that appear to be real because they were discovered uh, by multiple instruments, but their nature is unknown. And then there was another class of objects, uh, the first of which was discovered in 2017. These are interstellar objects entering the solar system from outside. And the first that was discovered is named Oumuamua, and it didn't look like a comet or an asteroid, the type of rocks that we have seen within the solar system. So for both classes of objects, it's time to conduct a scientific investigation and basically get a high resolution image of each of these unusual objects in trying to figure out their nature. And that's what we plan to do. A couple of weeks ago, I received the funding at the level of close to $2 million from private donations and assembled a team of exceptional researchers that for the first time in human history will start studying this subject scientifically. I was going to say, this is a subject, uh, as we mentioned when we introduced you here, that, you know, five, ten years ago, uh, to have a conversation on a mainstream news outlet like this would probably not happen. But because of this report that was released to Congress about these investigations into unidentified flying objects, the tone around this has changed, and lawmakers are now looking at this. They don't know what these things are, but if they're in air American airspace and they shouldn't be there, then that's a, a situation of concern. Uh, can you tell me a little more specifically about how exactly what you will be doing to try and, and investigate and bring scientific rigor to this field where there hasn't necessarily been so much scientific rigor? Right. The first thing to do is collect new evidence. We don't want to rely on classified evidence or eyewitness testimonies, but assemble data from scientific instruments, state of the art. And what we mean by that is use telescopes that look at the sky, monitor the sky, and feed the data into cameras that process it through a computer system that allows us to filter objects of interest and then study it like any other astronomical survey of the sky, except we're focusing on nearby objects and monitoring their motion. And the idea is that, you know, it's about time for us to clear up the fog using the scientific method on this subject, irrespective of what we find, we will learn something new because currently there is a lot of uncertainty and uh, it, it's uh, time to move this subject from the talking points of politicians, military personnel and speculations by the public to the realm of science. Uh, what do you make of the report that was released to Congress? I know it wasn't very long, the public version that uh, everyone saw. It sort of gave a number of different explanations as to what these sightings could be. Some 144 events where uh, members of the military saw things that they were investigated. There have been a couple of theories that were put out in, in terms of by the, the Pentagon into what they were looking at. One is it could be a foreign adversary like China or Russia with advances in technology, and that's what these pilots are seeing. It could could be U.S. secret government technology that they were testing that these pilots just happened to stumble upon. And, and the other main sort of uh, one of the other options that gets a lot of attention is that perhaps it's something not from this this planet. When, from your perspective, when you've been looking at what do you what did you think of that report and what do you make of it? Right. The most important statement in the report is that some of the objects are real. And uh, that's very significant because it means that it's not a malfunction of a specific instrument. But uh, regarding their nature, we really need the better evidence. And that's what we will try to collect. You know, it's just like a fishing expedition. We shouldn't assume anything about the fish. We just send out the hook and try to look very closely at the fish that we get. Rather than have a prejudice, rather than make uh, assessments about what we might find, let's be open-minded and collect 
a high resolution image of these objects. And I should remind everyone that it's, it could be a mixed bag. Most of the objects may have mundane explanations, but all you need is one that appears to come from an extraterrestrial civilization for this to have a major impact on society. So we are just looking for that one special object if it exists out there and we don't assume anything, we will just go out and search for it using open data, a transparent analysis. And the reason we call it the Galileo project is because in the days of Galileo, the philosophers thought that they know that the sun moves around the earth and they refused to look through Galileo's telescope. They put him in house arrest. Nowadays, he would have been canceled on social media. And uh, we don't want to repeat that mistake. We want to look through our telescopes without prejudice. Do you feel that there is a lot of prejudice around this subject matter? Definitely. Uh, most people prefer to believe that we are the smartest. We are at the center of the universe. We know that uh, throughout human history. And the point is that if you close the curtains on your window and say, we don't have any neighbors, we are the smartest in the neighborhood, uh, then uh, you will stay ignorant. Uh, that will not get rid of any neighbor you have. We better get a, a good sense of reality by collecting evidence rather than having a prejudice. So what happens next? Uh, give me a timeline here. When do you hope to, uh, or how does this all roll out? Walk us through it. Right, so um, uh, around the time when the Pentagon report was uh, released, um, the head of NASA, um, uh, suggested that scientists should look into that. I contacted the people under him, uh, didn't get a response. Um, I, I told them I'm happy to, to help and make your boss happy. Uh, but uh, a week later, um, I received the donations from a number of wealthy individuals that were very intrigued by my book, uh, Extraterrestrial, that came out uh, six months ago. It became a bestseller in many countries, was translated to 25 languages, and there were about a thousand interviews that I had to go through since then. Uh, and so people in the public uh, were excited by the, possible, by the possibility that uh, there might be objects of extraterrestrial technologies around us. And so now I have the money to actually move forward. We don't need to wait for anyone. What we need is to buy the equipment that uh, is state of the art, and that means uh, uh, telescopes uh, and cameras and computer systems, and then uh, place those telescopes in uh, many different locations. And we have funding for uh, tens of telescopes right now. My hope is that we will get 10 times more funding at the level exceeding $10 million so that we can put a hundred systems around the globe. And uh, my hope is that within a year, we will start collecting uh, interesting data. And then I'll be glad to appear on your program again and tell you the results. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Let's keep in touch and keep this conversation going. Thank you very much, Professor Loeb. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.